Astronomer Dr. Luisa Pigiotti and I are climbing up to the 18th century observatory. At the top, she promises to show me one of the most important books in scientific history. So, what do we have here? Okay, this is the second edition of Revolutionibus. Uh, ah, Copernicus. Yes. This is De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, which was published in 1543 by the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. I'll be careful. Is it this second? The significance of this book is enormous. In it, Copernicus argues for the first time since Greek antiquity that all the planets, including the Earth, go around the Sun. For thousands of years, everyone had believed a very different view, that the Earth is static and everything, including the stars, Sun and planets, move around it. And here there are all his system, okay. Oh, there we go. And just so the system. The sun okay. in the it's middle. It's a famous mm, drawing. Yes. This one. <laughs> oh yes, and there's the, yes, there's Terra. With the moon. Yeah, with the moon with going the moon. around okay. it. Okay. Yes. This is an astonishing book, and many historians credit it with starting the European scientific revolution. The first crucial step in a journey that led to modern physics. Well, I agree. But it does seem a bit odd that one doesn't hear much about where Copernicus got his ideas and information. The impression is that they came out of nowhere. The beginning? The beginning is all in, in, in Arabic. It certainly is a real revelation to me that he explicitly mentions a 9th century Muslim for providing him with a great deal of observational data, an astronomer who lived in Damascus called El Batani. Like all the great scientists of the Islamic Empire, El Batani lived in a culture without portraiture. All we have are later impressions of what he might have looked like. And uh, here he mentioned uh, Hipparchus, uh, Calippo, Ptolemy, and so on, and he started to mention what uh, he called Marcovetus, Arafensis, and means Albatani. Okay. Yeah. And then the second book here. And the second book is, uh, oh, uh, we can look at the beginning in Latin. I see, we can open it. Copernicus, in fact, made extensive use of Albertani's observations of the positions of planets, the sun, the moon and stars. He worked with Latin translations, similar to this one, of the Syrian astronomer's data. 